Hi, this is Nyla Patel with the Alpha Zeta Eta chapter at North Lake College. Today we have Officer Mark Newton from the Dallas County Community Police Department and we will be um, continuing our discussion on intimate partner violence and explore how victims can receive help. So Officer Mark, our first question for you is, what does consent mean if both parties are intoxicated? It all depends on how intoxicated both parties are. However, if you are so intoxicated that you pass out, once you pass out, even if the person says yes, but they pass out before the actual deed happens, then there is no consent. You cannot give consent if you are unconscious. It's like medical. You can refuse medical up until the point you are unconscious. Once you are unconscious, they will work on you until they bring you back. If you are intoxicated and you say, yes, let's go have sex, and you pass out because that person went and took a shower and you come back and you're passed out, there's no more consent. So the consent's only working while you're still conscious. While you're conscious and both of you are in agreement, yes. Okay. Um, and what, according to you, what is the clear legal definition of consent? Clear legal definition? Both parties at the correct age, and in Texas it's 17, give consent to each other. Yes, I want to have sex with you. Yes, that's consent, period. Okay, got it. Um, so I know you've probably dealt with a lot of intimate partner violence cases while being an officer. Um, according to you, what is the proper procedure for someone who wants to report intimate partner violence? Proper procedure? Ooh, that really all depends on the person. I mean, there is, there are procedures, but most people aren't really comfortable talking to a man, so they will wait. They will tell a friend. They will tell a counselor. I mean, they will do things that you shouldn't do. Like once you realize that you've been sexually assaulted, you should not take a shower. You should try to report it, go to go to a hospital or to a medical clinic, unwashed, anything. Keep the underwear that you had. I mean, there's so much that you can do, but you have to, t you have to get to a hospital first so they can collect specimens and samples and then the hospital will call the police. If you tell the nurse, hey, I've been assaulted, she will call the police. And 99% of the time, if there's a female available, they will bring a female officer to talk to. Okay. So after um, they report it to the police, what is the procedure? Like, are they made aware that whatever they're going to be, you know, reporting now can be like, it can expose their name or whatever later on, or um, is there like a paperwork that they have to fill out, or there how does it work? Paperwork, but you have a right to privacy. Your name does not have to go anywhere. Right, because you can be marked as Jane Doe. The attorneys will know who you are, but you do have a right to privacy. Okay, got it. Um, and what North Lake College and community resources are available? that help survivors of intimate partner violence that you know of? We have counselors up in A311. We have great counseling staff. They will talk to you. And if it is beyond their scope, they will give you, they will tell you where you can go to seek more help. And that you would recommend that for, um, people who don't want to necessarily get help at North Lake, but they want to get help in the community if they don't feel at school, do you think you would recommend that they go to counseling and find resources for, from yes. the community? Yes, because with that kind of trauma, 
you know, you're going to need counseling. You know, a lot of people, they compartmentalize and they say, I can put this behind me, I'm strong, I can do. No, you need to talk to someone. You need to have the communication. You basically need to get, get it out. And sometimes things happen and you internalize and you blame yourself or you will take it, eventually you will end up taking it out on others. So yes, counseling is the best way to go because PTSD is real. Do you have any other advice that you'd like to give to victims or survivors of intimate partner violence or any personal advice that you can offer from your experience? Yes, you know, if you're in a relationship, then if the person becomes violent, or, I mean, it might seem small that they hit you or they verbally abuse you. You should be looking out for that because eventually that person is going to hit you for real or he is going to emotional abuse and verbal abuse is just as bad as physical abuse. Mm -hmm. And it can tear you down. So you need to get away from that relationship and if that person keeps coming at you after you said no please call the police that is what we are here for we are here to help you far too often young ladies and i've had it here they come six seven a year later and say this person won't leave me alone that's too long as soon as you as soon as you say no and this person does not stop call 911 that simple. And they will be taken seriously? And they will definitely be taken seriously. Okay. 